Hey guys, it's Techmaster2133 here again today, and uh, I have something rather interesting to show you guys. Now, as long as I've had the channel, um, I've usually, my first video was of the Asus K55M laptop, and I kind of made that what the channel was supposed to be. Um, well, last night, or about a day ago, the Asus is no longer with me. I ended up, um, I was going to sell it on Craigslist, and I ended up trading it for another laptop. Now, what you see in front of you is a Dell Precision M4500 workstation laptop. And for what I use it for, it's much, much faster. Um, at doing those types of tasks. Now, I went from the A8 4500M APU, which was a quad core, 1.9 gigahertz, to this thing. This thing has an Intel Core i7-620M, uh, 2.66 gigahertz, dual core Intel Core i7, with hyper threading on each core, but it also has turbo boost, and most of the time, 99% of the time, this thing runs at 3.5 gigahertz. Um, when it's under load, it runs about 3.1, um, and that's where it stays. So the 2.66 gigahertz is kind of misleading. Uh, it is actually a 3 gigahertz um, Intel Core i7. But I wanted to get to showing it off to you guys. Um, Open up the. You have to bear with me for a second because it's got very, very, very tight hinges that uh, will lift up the laptop. But on the uh, inside here, with the screen being a little bit dirty, it doesn't really show up in real life, but shows up on the camera. That's nice. I'm gonna have to clean that. Um, has a 1920 by 1080 resolution matte screen, so it's non-reflective. Uh, it's very, very bright and very, very clear. The keyboard has huge palm rests. Um, this got negative reviews for the palm rest area. For me, it's perfect. I have big hands. I can reach the keyboard from here perfectly. But as you can see, Intel Core i7 has 8 gigs of RAM and MSATA SSD it's only a 30 gig, but I plan on upgrading to a 256 gig and a 500 gig Western Digital internal hard drive. Back there is the 130 watt power brick that goes to this thing. Uh, it has a 6300 milliamp hour battery or milliwatt hour. This thing measures in milliwatt hours. I don't know why. At least the tool that I use to measure the battery's capacity does. Um, and it lasts about two to three hours on a charge. Uh, it's got about 30% wear, so it's not as good as it used to be. Plan on replacing that. I can get a nine cell extended battery for 20 to 30 bucks online. So I think I'm gonna do that. Um, it's a bit light on USB ports. It has two there, well, it has one there which the one on this one doesn't function because the little black piece in the middle of the USB port broke off. Um, the guy told me that, he was honest. That is the only flaw with this laptop is that USB port doesn't work. Um, underneath that is an, I think, an MSATA connector. Uh, I forget what it's called, but you could plug in a SATA drive to that and you have a display port and then the exhaust ventilation on the uh, CPU here's where the MSATA uh, SSD sits and then you have a micro SD card reader it has relatively decent and uh, deep sounding speakers on both sides here, the stereo speakers um, what else? Touchpad uh, is very, very nice, very, very clean. It's got the the little mouse 
thing that nobody ever uses, the uh, eraser head mouse. On this side, you have a 1394 port, um, the dual layer DVD-ROM writable drive, your microphone and headphone jacks, your Wi-Fi on and off switch, uh, and two USB ports. And if we go around to the back, there's really not too much uh, to be said for the back. It has, be careful, it still has all of its rubber feet and everything, so I don't want to rip them off by being careless and just ripping the thing around. But in the back, you have a standard VGA out and your Ethernet port and then the uh, DC power jack to charge the thing. Oh, and there's also Kensington lock right there. But uh, I'm going to pause the video and then I want to show you guys something that I find uh, amazing. This is by far the easiest laptop ever to take apart or work on that I've ever had in my life. And more laptop designers need to take note from Dell. Okay, so we're on the bottom of the laptop now. And as you can see, here's the battery. It's got a little charge indicator on it. But what I wanted to show you guys was one screw, this one here, removes the whole bottom cover. There's no dicking around with like 30 some odd screws to take your laptop apart and clean it out. Um, I will demonstrate here really quick and show you the insides. It is also a non-removable screw. You cannot lose it. Uh, it only comes out a certain way. These four screws, you'll see what happens in a minute. One screw, and voila, you have access to the whole damn laptop. That is the best design ever. I love that. Um, and then the four screws there are actually just recessed in there. Now inside here, you have the Intel Core i7 processor there, the um, NVIDIA Quattro 880M GPU here, which is what I was going to talk about later on, the MSATA SSD here, 500 gig hard drive here, 8 gigs of RAM here, and somewhere the wireless chip which uh, I'm not exactly sure where that is. Uh, <laughs> is that actually not hooked up? Hmm, <clears throat> I don't know where those go. But they're not hooked to anything. I think that's Bluetooth, but I'm not sure. Because um, there's an expansion here that uh, I noticed as well. It's got nothing in it. I don't know what it is for, but oh well thing works perfect. I just actually the other day got done scraping off the old thermal paste and uh, cleaning everything with rubbing alcohol and putting it back together because the thing was running toasty uh, about 75 to 83 celsius under load um, and the fan was running constantly and it was idling uh, about 65 70 celsius and when I pulled this all off, it had the original thermal paste, the original gray, crappy stuff that dries up and turns hard. Yeah, I had to chip that off with a screwdriver. Um, but now, it's got brand new thermal paste, and it's a lot happier. The fan is almost never on when I'm not doing anything. Uh, under load, it still gets into the, the high 70s, um, but... It's normal for this laptop, especially running at 3 gigahertz and um, all of that. So, But anyway, let's go ahead and put this back together and flip it around and I'll show you something. I'll show you the rest of it anyway, what it can do. Uh, the original topic of this video was um, gaming on a Quattro GPU because Quattro graphics cards, for anybody that doesn't know, I'm sorry if I was just pointing at my crotch for a second, I wasn't really paying attention, but Quattro graphics cards, for people who don't know, are not designed for gaming in the least bit. They are 
creative design cards um, meant for CAD and uh, 3D modeling and professional work. They are not meant to game. The drivers are not set up for gaming or anything. I have to put this down real quick because I can't get this to slide on the right way with one hand. So give me a second. Okay, we're back. Anyway, as I was saying, Quattro graphics cards are not designed for gaming. Uh, the, the architecture of the card is different. The drivers for the card are different. Um, and they're just not meant to do it. They're entirely different than the GeForce series of NVIDIA graphics cards. So many people think that you cannot game on a Quattro series graphics card. I have the... Uh, this machine came with two of the Quattro graphics cards, two types. You either had the 880M or you had the 1800M. This one has the 880M. It has one gig of DDR3 dedicated VRAM. Um, and I was surprised. I got the laptop knowing that it was not a gaming laptop. I wanted this specifically for rendering videos um, because my desktop being the A65400K dual core takes hours to render 1080p. This being a creative design card would take advantage of that and it would massively cut down the time because uh, it has CUDA cores, I think 48 CUDA cores, it supports CUDA and NVIDIA physics and all that. Um, it is not a DirectX 11 card, it is a DirectX 10.1 card. Um, but so far, uh, pretty much what I'm saying is, you can game on a Quattro graphics card if you're willing to lower the settings. Obviously, it's not going to go max it out at 1080p on Ultra, but I have about 60 some odd games in my Steam library, and so far, Every single one, except one, which was very, very, very OpenGL heavy, I do believe. Uh, that one didn't like it. It was Space Engineers, and it got about 11 FPS, uh, no matter what resolution you're on. So that one, it just did not like. But everything else, I will demonstrate for you in a second here. Let's power it up. I really got to clean that screen. It doesn't look too bad in uh, off camera, but the camera picks up the light and it picks up all the little smudges. This does have onboard RAID. Um, I can configure RAID between the MSATA drive and the hard drive. Like it's a, it was a fairly high spec machine in its time. I do believe it released uh, in 2010 or 2011, and it cost $1,700 when it released this is not uh, installed to the MSATA drive because the MSATA drive is only 30 gigs this is all installed to the 500 gig with a couple of games installed to the MSATA drive that's why I said I am planning to upgrade it maybe a 120 or a 256 Supposedly, on Dell's website, it lists up to 256, but I'm betting it could go higher. I don't think they had higher than a 256 in 2010. But the, uh, the 1920 by 1080 matte screen is very, very good, and the viewing angles are amazing on this laptop. You can view it from practically any angle and it does fine with little to no distortion or anything like that. Make sure this is finished booting up which it hasn't yet. It would be done if it was on the SSD but it's on the hard drive so give it a sec. But the whole design of this thing is very very Slick um, is not the thinnest thing in the world, as you can see. It's about a mm, little bit more than a half inch thick, probably three quarters of an inch. But for its age, um, I give it credit. 
and just look at that beautiful screen and that awesome desktop background. But uh, I think we're about done booting up here. Got all my hardware monitor stuff going. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to jump straight in to one of the more demanding games. We're going to do uh, Metro Last Light Redux. Keep in mind, most people say, if you go and say, oh, I want a game on a uh, NVIDIA 880M, they're going to look at you, laugh, and say, oh, that game probably won't even launch. But right now, it's getting 30 FPS. This screen has two options in game. You could set it to a 40 hertz refresh rate or a 60 hertz refresh rate. It is currently set to 60. Now, remember what I said about lowering the settings? Yes, it's running 1440 by 900 on low with uh, 4X anti-aliasing, motion blur is off and V-Sync is off. Um, and it's running 42 FPS, so let's go ahead and get into game here. Uh, it's going to continue. If you notice, right now it's running about 60, 60 Celsius on the GPU and 50 Celsius on the CPU. But we are in game and we're getting 40 FPS. Uh, it's going to be hard to hold the camera and do things, but um, yeah, 40 to 30 FPS. It doesn't drop below this. This is what you get the entire game. So if you don't mind, and it doesn't look bad, it still looks pretty darn good. So if you don't mind dropping the settings, you can game on the 880M NVIDIA Quadro, graf or, yeah, Quadro graphics card. And this particular Quadro isn't even listed as one that's supported by this game. The minimum supported is the Quadro 1000M. So, yes, you can game on a Quadro GPU. And if I record, Oh, whoops. Why is it trying to record to the external drive? Anyway, being being the uh, i7 that it is, I could still record between uh, 25 and 30 FPS. Now, the hard drive will stutter like crazy because it's not an SSD, but when I get the M side of SSD, I'll be able to record games to it. And this is going to be my main laptop now. Um, as you can see under a couple of minutes in load, or under load, we're at 69 on the GPU, 72 Celsius on the CPU, 73, and it sits right there. It won't go any higher than that. But anyway, guys, this was just a quick demonstration and overview that you can game on Quattro graphics cards. Um, with little to no issue, you'll just have to lower the settings. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you liked it, like it. If you disliked it, disliked it. I could really care less. I just wanted to give you some information. So I'll talk to you later, tubers. And just for those of you who are wondering, this is the Windows Experience Index scores that it gets. 6.8 on the processor, 6.8 on the RAM, 6.4 on the gra graphics and gaming graphics, and 6 or 4.8 on the hard drive. Um, so that shows you where the bottleneck of the system is. But uh, the laptop is really nice considering my A8-4500M got a 6.6 .6 or a 6.7. So this is a little bit nicer according to Windows. But uh, alright, Tubes. I'll talk to you later. Bye.